Good morning. If you will stand with us as you're able. Okay, I just got the nod from Andrew. So um, if we just want to take a second and go around and greet people this morning in the way that you feel most comfortable, we'll do that now. It's a joy to be in worship with all of you this morning, and I want to welcome all the folks that are worshiping with us online as well. I invite you to register your attendance with us, keithumc.org, and uh, so that we can know that you are worshiping with us uh, this morning. I want to draw your attention to a few announcements that we have in our bulletin. Uh, the Children and Youth Ministry Committees are meeting today at noon in Intimator Hall, and if you're interested in joining this team or if you're interested in helping out with children or youth, you can t- contact our youth director, Mark Reedy. He'd be happy to talk more with you about that. The KCA is hiring Parents Day Out teachers for the fall semester on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 to 3, starting August the 16th. So if you or someone you know uh, might be interested in that, let us know about that. 
Uh, this Wednesday, we are continuing our Bible study, 7 o'clock in Innsminger Hall or on Zoom, on the different Christian denominations. We're going to be looking at the Mormon denomination this week, so we'd love to have you come and join us for that. Uh, we are going to offer a Keith 101 class. Uh, it's open for uh, new members or anybody that's interested in learning more about our church. That's going to take place all the Sundays during the month of August at 10 o'clock in the conference room. Uh, we'd love to have you and uh, talk more about the church and, and what it means to be a part of uh, the Keith Church family. Also on your bulletin, you'll see uh, some information about Isaiah 117 House. Uh, we're going to have a lemonade stand here at the church on Saturday. Um, if you don't know about Isaiah 117, this is a great opportunity to come and learn more about it. Amelia Reedy is uh, organizing that, so if you'd like to donate or uh, spend some time helping out with that, you can contact her about that. Also, the UMW are selling gift cards uh, from the church office, and you can mail those to Pat Grace, and her information is printed there in the bulletin. This morning, we are continuing our sermon series called Splash, Wading Deeper into the Scriptures as we talk about Jesus and his encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well. And so as we think about that story and prepare our hearts and minds for worship, let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Loving and caring God, we come this morning in hope. Hope that will sustain us in our trying times, our lonely times, our doubting times. Refresh us this morning with the living water of your presence and love. Open us to the possibilities of friendship, the possibilities of encountering you in unexpected ways, and the possibilities of seeing the miraculous in everyday life. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Can compare your 
now come to our prayer time this morning, and it is a joy to have uh, Kinsley Melhorn helping us lead worship while Josh and Cecilia are in Honduras. I believe they're on their way back uh, this morning, and so um, it's wonderful to have Kinsley. I, I told her, I was like, just even though Josh is going to come back, you're welcome to come back and sing anytime you want. Just come on. Um, but it's been a joy to have her uh, worshiping with us these past few weeks. Uh, we do want to lift up uh, the family of Susan Kessler, uh, her father, Susan Kessler's father, uh, Freeman Gregory, um, passed away, and so we want to lift up Susan and her family as they mourn the loss of her father. Uh, we also want to lift up the family of Robin Long, who passed away this week, as well as the family of Mike Grayson. This is Pat Grayson's brother, uh, who passed away this week as well. So we've got a lot of people in our church family who are grieving uh, during this time. Uh, do we have any other joys or concerns that we can lift up and share with one another uh, this morning? Do any of us have unspoken requests which we would acknowledge by the lifting of our hands this morning? As always, you can let us know how we can join you and come alongside you in prayer. Um, you can fill out on your perforated section of your bulletin uh, your prayer requests so that we can know how we can lift you up in prayer. Or you can email us at prayer at keithumc.org as well. This time, let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, this morning, we remember the story of Jesus and his encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well. In this story, we see how Jesus crosses all sorts of boundaries in this conversation, race, religion, gender, status. Help us to identify some of the boundaries in our own lives that need to be broken down, that need to be crossed. Help us to see the people who are often marginalized and ignored and pushed aside. We know that you are a God of all people, and we thank you for the ways that Jesus enters into the scene and breaks down our borders, our walls, and our barriers. Lord, we know that we do not always do the things that you have called us to do. We do not always love the people that you have called us to love. We do not always go to the places that you have called us to go. So forgive us for the ways that we have fallen short and sinned against you. Forgive us for the ways that we have fallen short and sinned against one another. Forgive us for the ways that we have ignored the needs of those around us. And forgive us for the ways that we have put up barriers between us and our neighbors. Lord, we know that your grace and mercy is persistent. You are always there to welcome us back into your embrace. Lord, this morning we lift up all the situations that were spoken and all of the situations that were unspoken. 
We pray for your compassionate and healing love to be poured out on our community, on our church, and on our world. We ask for your presence to be made known. We ask for your comfort and peace for those who are experiencing a difficult time. And as we have offered our prayers, let us also offer our lives, trusting in your love and call to us, responding with confidence. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to give our offering this morning, I want to mention two things. One is the ministry of women at the well. Every time you give money in our offering plate, a part of that money goes to help offer uh, help and support to different ministries and missions, one of which is Women at the Well, which is a a support group for uh, recovery for women. And so I want to mention that this morning as we're thinking about the Samaritan woman at the well. I also want to mention another opportunity to give. Um, every year we help give uh, to the Jubilation or Jubilee Project. Um, you guys remember Undie Sunday? Some of you know uh, what that is. Uh, every year we collect underwear and socks for some folks in Sneedville, Tennessee that are in need. Uh, well, the McMinn Methodist Ministries called over there. And they said, we don't need underwear. We don't need socks. We, we've, we've got that. But we do need... Uh, money to help build wells in Sneedville, Tennessee, for those who don't, don't have clean drinking water. So it takes $7,000 to build a, a well for one family to have clean drinking water. And so that's our mission this year, is to build one well for one family in Sneedville, Tennessee, as uh, McMinn Methodist Ministries. And so um, if you would like to give to that project, you can make your check out to Jubilee Project. And uh, we'd love to, to see how you can help support Uh, that ministry of of building a well for a family in need. And so I want you to come at this time. We've got baskets in the back and up here in the front. You can come and bring your offering. You can also light a candle and kneel in prayer. So let's continue our worship this morning.
Continuing our sermon series, Splash, Wading Deeper into the Scriptures. This series we've been looking at different stories in the Bible where we see water play an important role. And this morning we're looking at the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well. Scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, starting at verse 4. Jesus had to go through Samaria. He came to a Samaritan city called Sychar which was near the land Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus was tired from his journey, so he sat down at the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me some water to drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy him some food. The Samaritan woman asked, Why do you, a Jewish man, Ask for something to drink for me, a Samaritan woman. Jews and Samaritans didn't associate with each other. Jesus responded, If you recognize God's gift and who is saying to you, Give me some water to drink, you would be asking him and he would give you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you don't have a bucket and the well is deep. Where would you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave this well to us, and he drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give will never be thirsty again. The water that I give will become in those who drink it a spring of water that bubbles up into eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will never be thirsty and will never need to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go get your husband and come back here. The woman replied, I don't have a husband. You are right to say I don't have a husband, Jesus answered. You've had five husbands, and the man you are with now isn't your husband. You've spoken the truth. The woman said, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you and your people say that it is necessary to worship in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you and your people will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You and your people worship what you don't know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. But the time is coming and is here. When true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. The Father looks for those who worship Him this way. God is spirit. And it is necessary to worship God in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one who is called the Christ. When He comes, He will teach everything to us, Jesus said to her. I am the one who speaks with you. Just then, Jesus' disciples arrived, and they were shocked that he was talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want, or why are you talking with her? The woman put down her water jar and went into the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who has told me everything I've done. Could this man be the Christ? They left the city and were on their way to see Jesus. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
The disciples have gone, left to get to the nearest city uh, to bring back some food. They've gone to the closest food city for a grocery run, and, and Jesus is left alone all by himself. And we can see that, that Jesus is up to no good. Jesus is in Samaria, the land of the Samaritans. They could, could have gone straight back to Galilee, but Jesus just had to make this little pit stop in Samaria. This is kind of a strange place to stop, considering the Samaritans and the Jews do not get along. Samaritans were Israelites who had stayed in the northern kingdom following the Assyrian captivity, and they intermarried, intermarried with the Assyrians and were considered to be half Jew and half Gentile. The Samaritans worshipped in a different temple. They had their own different copy of the Torah. They had their own religious systems. And they had created these barriers between the Jews and the Samaritans. Both sides believed that they were the true inheritors of God's covenant with Abraham and Moses. Both sides considered themselves to be the rightful owners of the land. And the Samaritans wanted nothing to do with the Jews. The Jews wanted nothing to do with the Samaritans. In fact, they hated each other. But here we see Jesus sitting at the well of Jacob. This is believed to be the same location where Jacob met his wife, Rachel, back in Genesis chapter 29. And it's at Jacob's well where we see Jesus encounter a Samaritan woman. And he asks her for a drink of water. And the Samaritan woman is quick to point out all the reasons why this is not a good idea. <laughs> she, she says, why do you, a Jewish man... Ask for something to drink from me, a Samaritan woman. And in parentheses in the text, the author John gives us the inside scoop. He says, oh, by the way, uh, Jews and Samaritans don't associate with one another. They don't share things in common with one another. Jesus is a Jewish man. She is a Samaritan woman. They should not be speaking to one another. This is why Jesus is up to no good. This is why the disciples should never have left him alone. Because Jesus is, is stepping into some dangerous territory here. He's crossing some lines. He's stepping outside some boundaries. He's breaking up some social and cultural norms of his day. Jesus is defying racial, ethnic, and gender boundaries all in one. Jesus is is taking a risk, first of all, just by speaking to this woman, but then he's taking an even greater risk by asking her for a drink of water. It's completely against the cultural and social rules of the day. And to us, hearing this story and thinking about this, we might think, you know, what's the big deal? Why can't a Samaritan woman give a Jewish man a drink of water? You know, to us in the 21st century, we don't see what the big deal is. We think, you know, I mean, that just sounds kind of silly, Right? You know, why, why wouldn't she be allowed to give Jesus a drink of water? In the original uh, Greek text, the literal translation says, Samaritans and Jews could not drink out of the same vessel. Maybe another way of saying that is, you can't drink out of the same cup. Or maybe we could even take it a step further and say, you can't drink out of the same water fountain. Now, all of a sudden, that starts to sound a little, a little familiar uh, doesn't it? Um, it wasn't that long ago in our own country when it was illegal for blacks and whites to drink out of the same water fountain. In fact, only 56 years ago, 56 years ago, on July 2nd, 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act, Civil Rights Act into law, which made a segregation of public facilities, including water fountains and restrooms, um, officially outlawed. You couldn't segregate those, those things because of that act. And there were a lot of people who were completely against it. A lot of people voted against it. A lot of people spoke out against it. They were completely against that. They wanted to maintain that segregation, that separation. A lot of people still today want to maintain that separation and segregation. In fact, uh, just a few years ago, uh, I was out walking my dog one day. It was in the summertime. And this car pulls up next to me. And the window rolls down, and I see that it's an elderly woman. And I think, oh, she's going to say something about my dog. She's going to say, oh, you got a cute dog, or, you know, something like that. 
because I do have a cute dog. Um, but what happened next was, was really kind of shocking. She rolled down the window. She looked at me and she said, is that a black person that lives around the corner of that house? And I was kind of taken aback and kind of caught off guard. And I said, uh, I, 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 I don't know. And she said, well, let me tell you, I saw that black man walk out of that house, go down to the mailbox, take the mail out of that mailbox, and walk right back inside that house. And I just don't know what we're going to do now that those people are living in our neighborhood. She rolled up the window and drove off. And I'm left standing there thinking, what just happened? You know, what was going through her mind to think that, first of all, it's okay to think that, and second of all, it's okay to say that out loud to me. I, you know, I just couldn't believe that there were still people who, who think that, who think that there are some people who should live in that neighborhood and some people that shouldn't live in that neighborhood. For some reason, she believed that black people did not belong in her neighborhood. It's kind of hard to believe that that, that still exists that belief system that, that some people are in and some people are out and that's just the way it should be. But, but Jesus isn't interested in maintaining any rules of segregation. He isn't interested in only hanging out with the insiders. No, Jesus goes up to this Samaritan woman and asks her for a drink. Jesus is constantly reaching out to the marginalized, the outcast, and the outsiders. Jesus is always seeking out the people who are rejected and ignored. I love what the retired bishop, Will Williman, uh, says. He says, generally, Jesus appears to have uh, better luck with the outsiders than the insiders. Note that the insiders seek out Jesus. They go to Jesus, trying to figure him out on their terms. But Jesus goes to the outsiders. He seeks them out, engages them. Jesus comes to them before they have a chance to come to him. Jesus got in all manner of trouble for spending so much time with the outsiders, the uninformed, the unfaithful, and the uncommitted. But Jesus said so himself. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So Jesus asks this woman for a drink of water. And they engage in this back and forth dialogue, this conversation. They have 13 exchanges with each other. This is the longest dialogue in all of the Gospels that Jesus has with anybody. Jesus and this unnamed, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus and this unnamed woman have this conversation and he tells her, if you knew how generous God was, and if you knew who you were speaking to, you would ask for me to give you a drink of living water. He tells her, everybody that drinks this water from the well will be thirsty again, but the, the water that I give that people will drink will never be thirsty again. In fact, it'll, it'll be a spring of water that bubbles up and leads to eternal life. And the Samaritan woman hears this and she wants that living water. You know, she, she, she wants that water that brings forth eternal life. And, and at first, she takes Jesus literally. She's like, do you have a bucket that can reach down to get that water? I mean, I don't want that water. You don't have anything with you to, to, to draw any water out of this well. But, but Jesus stirs that conversation. He invites her to this, this conversation of eternal water, this water that, that will may, never make you thirsty again. And, and so she says, I want this water Give me this water so that I will never be thirsty again. And then this is where Jesus stirs the conversation away from living water toward the woman's marital status, which I always thought kind of came out of nowhere. Jesus says, go and get your husband. She said, well, I don't have a husband. And Jesus, of course, knows that already. He says, yeah, I know you don't. In fact, you've had five husbands, and, and the, woman, the man that you're living with now isn't even your husband, so... You've spoken the truth. And I, I'm kind of trying to figure out where Jesus is getting at here. Every time I've, I've read the scripture, it kind of just comes out of nowhere. Jesus brings up the situation in this Samaritan woman's life. 
And scholars think that perhaps this is why the woman has come to the well in the middle of the day. Most people come in the morning times, but those social outcasts, those marginalized come at noontime when nobody else is around. So, so I don't know. I mean, I don't really know what to make of this woman's story because the truth is we don't, we don't have enough information. You know, we can only imagine what this woman has gone through in her life. We can only imagine the sadness and, and the disappointment that she has suffered. I mean, where are those husbands? Have they died? Have they left her? How has she been affected by this? I've heard a number of sermons that place the blame on this woman and her sin, calling her an adulteress, a loose woman, condemn her for her sinful ways, but, but I'm not so sure that's fair. Um, you know, unfortunately, in Jesus' day, women didn't have the options that they do today. Women did not have the power to make the final decision when it, came, when it came to divorce. You know, we don't know what this woman has gone through in her life. We don't know some of the challenges that she has faced. But one thing is clear. Jesus brings this up to this woman, not to condemn her, not to point out ways that she has been sinful. Instead, Jesus is bringing this up simply to show her that he really is the one with living water. He does this to show her that he knows things about her, even though that they've never met. He speaks truth into her life. And this woman responds with nothing but amazement. She says, sir, I see that you're a prophet. You know, you know these things about my life that, that no stranger would know. I see that you're a prophet. And then we come to see that she, she comes to realize that Jesus is in fact the, the Messiah, the promised Messiah, the, the Christ. And it's right about this time that the disciples come back. And they see that Jesus has been up to no good. Jesus is talking to this Samaritan woman, and they are annoyed with Jesus. Now, they don't say anything to him about it, but you can tell they're upset. They're rolling their eyes. They're thinking to themselves, come on, Jesus, we leave you alone for five minutes and you're talking to a Samaritan woman? You know, don't you know that you're not supposed to do that? Don't you know that you're supposed to be drinking out of different water fountains? You know, don't you know that she is an outsider? Yeah, that's the sort of thing that happens when you leave Jesus alone for five minutes. Well, the woman... After this encounter with Jesus, she leaves her water jar, her jar of water, which I think that's a great detail, isn't it? She came to that well and was filled up with living water. She didn't need her jar. She goes back and she shares with the people of Samaria. She proclaims about this man that she has met that knows all of these things about her, all the things that she's done, all the things that, that she's been through. She tells them about this man named Jesus who just might be the Messiah. And the Samaritans believe. They seek Jesus out. They meet with Jesus. They end up spending a few days with Jesus. And they come back and they say, we believed your testimony, but now we've also seen for ourselves that this man is indeed the Messiah. Will Willimon was right. Jesus has better luck sometimes with the outsiders than he does with the insiders. Let us pray. Lord of living water, pour your mercy out on us this morning. Wash us clean and help us to be true disciples as we move away from our selfishness and stubbornness and move toward your hope and peace. Allow us to place our whole trust in your love. May we drink from the well of living waters and experience your eternal love in our hearts and minds this day. Remind us that you are a God of all people. That you are a God not just for us the insiders, but a God for everyone. May we reach out to the people in our community who are ignored and forgotten and cast aside and gossiped about. 
Keep us strong and give us courage to serve you in all that we do. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. If you'll stand with us as you're able. Thank you all again for joining us for the service of worship. If you're visiting with us this morning, so glad that you're here and invite you to come back and join us again next week. I um, invite you now to receive this benediction. Arise and go in peace. May God's love and grace be with you and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>